doorstep why are you keeping score I'm not afraid of anything you could throw my way how can you watch me inside of this cage Desire hangs on a wire. It's just temptation. You can't see more than one. But it feels so true. What if it's just who I am? I'm not afraid of anything you could throw my way. Hit me again, hardest you can. I cannot be sorry 100% of the time. Never again. Never again. Never And I fall, scrape my knees every day. I get scared to speak, bad times and to be. the process as danger I get scared to even focus on the good times they fit as I know what it is to feel
if I hadn't realized you walked dead right into my life. You would have loved the view from way up high. Um, so, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, I re I, uh, I've actually seen you perform once. I went to a, a show of yours at 10 Forward, the, uh, the local watering hole here, and it was, I thought it was really great, like, um, definitely stood out. It, I feel like... Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> no problem, yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, that was a really fun show. Was it? Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, good crowd, good yeah. vibe there. I was on seven string too. Yeah, is that uh, what you typically play, seven string? I've been going back and forth lately and I've been mostly getting back to baritone for recording situations like this, um, just because I, I love the sound of that guitar with the EMG single coil pickups and it has a pick guard on it that I made out of epoxy resin. and. Uh, it just has a special place in my heart. I got it when I worked at Downtown Sounds for the first time, and That's I just cool. like spent so many of my paychecks on it. <laughs> Dang, that sounds awesome. It's like a, a Camaro or something like the car you like fix up or whatever, and you're like gotta yeah. drive this baby around. It belonged to the the guy in Holland Oates, T Bone Wolk. Oh really? Yeah. I don't know if I know him. Is he? Is that a band? Yeah, Holland Oates. Yeah. Holland Oates. Oh wait a minute. Oh wait. I yeah, think yeah, I do that know band. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Wow. And they, didn't they have like a TV show for a time? Oh, yeah. I, I don't know what it was called. But I don't know either. It might have been just called Holden. <laughs> we'll have to find that out. Yeah. Make some uh, interweb investigations. <laughs> Your thumbnail here. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, that would be great. Maybe, maybe we'll do that. <laughs> um, so uh, what got you started like playing music like and kind of like expressing yourself through music. Um, like, what age were you, um, and what, what kind of drew you to it? Well, I think I started singing when I was four years old. Oh, wow. Um, and I would used to sing, I, I'm Cambodian, so I would sing in Khmer, stuff like that, and I cool. would also, um, there was this after-school club where we'd do dances and also sing songs, and I'd write too. And in I Cambodia? Mean, yeah, in, in cool. Khmer, yeah. It was a lot of fun, and I just remember getting up in the school auditorium. My mom was my preschool teacher, so I, I was always um, very happy and lively in that school. And then I would just sing in the school auditoriums, and um, I grew up to around age 10 and wanted to pick up the guitar. So I got like a three-quarter sized uh, nylon guitar and was playing on that for a while and I mean Joni Mitchell really got me into folk music. Oh well, I feel like that I was like the first. <laughs> I can feel it, dude. Okay. My uh, my mom really likes Joni Mitchell, so I feel like I could like yeah, I like yeah. caught some Joni Mitchell from you. Oh, that's so cool. I always love getting that feedback. It's just kind of like, yes. <laughs> She's awesome. Dude, she I feel like she really tells an important story like not important, but uh it definitely like I feel like it can pierce walls with that story, you know. Yeah. Um, Fantastic lens. <laughs> yeah, like uh, I don't know how to articulate it, but like the, the components of like her music, I feel like are um, unique and they have an interesting like effect on people. Um, that was cool about like uh, you know like getting homeschool and like having like a lot of time to like um, express yourself and um, kind of like develop your own uh, sensibilities and stuff. Like, that sounds um, pretty great. Like, I can honestly relate to that. Um, like, I, uh, 
I don't know. I feel like I've always kind of been like on the more introspective side and like kind of just like waited out uh, what pe to see what people are actually thinking, you know, like don't take things at like face value or something. And uh, I don't know, I feel like that shows in like um, in music sometimes where uh, it's kind of um, introspective and sensitive to uh, other human beings and like their whole, um, you know, blue marble trip earth rotation. Yeah. yeah, when I homeschooled, that gave me the time to not only play in bands, but I also did a lot of songwriting on my own, and I was recovering from a really intense um, oversleeping thing I was going through. I was sleeping like 20 hours a day, sometimes 16. Um, Whoa. It was pretty serious, but music got me through it, and I also did a lot of event performance photography as well, so my life has just been going to shows. Cool. It's fun. That's awesome. Yeah, I remember you said that earlier that you, like, attend shows, like, all the time, like, really yeah, consistently. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's great. It's so wonderful, and if I can help an artist on their journey that's similar to mine or in some way capture a moment just, like, right when they move their arm a certain way or they, they're making the space, like, they're just having the best time of their life or they're really thinking about something or they hit a note and they, like, they move their hands in a certain way to wrap around a certain chord. It's like, it's different when you're a musician photographing musicians, and that's what I find is really fulfilling. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Are you trying to like catch them like in an like earnest moment, kind of like freeze frame, like some expression that's outside of uh, the uh, 1984 hellscape or whatever? Like Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most authentic moments. Awesome. Do you know the math art guitarist Yvette Young? Nah. She, her favorite band, I think, is Toe, and that's how I got into them, because she was one of my influences, and I was getting really into her riff. She makes these amazing little Instagram videos, and it's just so fun. I love her tone and her two-handed tapping style stuff, and I did some of it, but it, it's really hard, so I usually, I go one-handed, or I do some um, percussive stuff that's mixed with chords. I really like filling things out with lush chords nice. when I play. <laughs> no, yeah. I think I, uh, I've seen you do that, kind of like tapping on like the rhythm of it. Kind yeah, of like getting yeah. a feel for it, or, no, yeah, that seems pretty awesome. Like, um, I feel like you're kind of like uh, developing your own structure, like um, in real time, you know, like kind of, um, uh, what's the phrase, like, it's like, you know, it's like a part of how you put together the artwork or whatever. Yeah, things are merging together, and I love alternate tunings as well, that's a big Joni Mitchell thing, and also um, a lot of people that I find write really interesting things, write songs with the canvas already painted a little bit, or just even just like going to drop D, that opens up a whole other world, and that was one of my first tunings that wasn't standard tuning. Oh, but cool. That's getting into a little some guitar stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Drop D, like Nirvana or something, or, or yeah, Green yeah, Day? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I did both of those in middle school. I was in an after-school rock and roll club. That was really fun. After-school <laughs> rock and roll club. That sounds yeah, that so was cool. Fun. That was the beginning of, like, my rock and blues guitar journey. <laughs> nice. Um, are there any other uh, artists in the Pioneer Valley that you think other people should, like, check out? Oh, my God. So many. I just saw this jazz group, Interstellar Medium. And Interstellar Medium. Interstellar Medium. They were very, very good. And, I mean, I mean, there were a lot of Green River Fest artists that are locals, like Cloud Belly, Nayakete, Clyde B. Jones. I've heard of Clyde B. Jones. Yeah, yeah. I think I saw them once. Yeah. We both grew up going to camps at the Institute for the Musical Arts together, so we've always seen each other around, and it's this big community. Hannah Moen, Prune was really good. Oh my gosh. I mean, I could go on and on, but I feel like I would have needed a, a guidebook. Oh yeah, I didn't mean <laughs> to like spring this on you. City by city. No, it's okay, it's making me think. Um, I mean, we were just talking about Big Destiny earlier too. Yeah, Big Destiny. It's really fun. I just went to one of their shows recently, it was really, it was really cool. Like yeah. I was surprised how cool it was. <laughs> I was like, damn, these guys are too good. It's messing with my life uh, <laughs> plan, my uh, attitude. <laughs> I don't know. 
I, I love going to shows and being surprised. It's one of the best feelings. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, because it's like, oh man, this is real in the world. There's someone's making some you know dynamic <laughs> shit that really tells a true story or a vivid story. You know. Yeah, you really connect in a way that you don't when you um are just like scrolling on your phone or listening on Spotify, and they're completely different experiences. But live music really is yeah. a huge uh, storyteller. Yeah. No, yeah, it's like, uh, I feel like it's, maybe it's how, like, they felt in, like, the uh, 20s when, like, jazz was becoming a thing. They're like, you mean music's not just, like, banging on a drum and, like, <laughs> like what is this? <laughs> what is this? Is this an expression of a uh, human emotion? I, I thought we just, uh, freaking, uh, I don't know, what do you do in the 20s? <laughs> uh, smoke cigarettes? <laughs> um, Indoors? Smoking cigarettes indoors. Smoke cigarettes on airplanes <laughs> with a baby. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, is that? That's a different time. <laughs> Heck yeah. But uh, who else? Two wrong turns. I've been playing Two with them turns. a lot lately. They're, they're on the grungier side of things. They're really good. Cool name. Yeah, I like them a lot. And then there's, um, there's, there's so many. Oh my goodness. Maybe we can cut some more in later. <laughs> oh yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> so at the end of the video, it'll we'll have like all the band <laughs> rolling credits and it's like, here's all the band bands. Seven bands for you. <laughs> um, where can uh, the audience find your music, like to to peruse? I would say the best place to find my music is on my Instagram at Kinsey Gibbons. That's where I post all of my clips and updates, and then I've got a YouTube. I've also got Facebook, I've got a Spotify where my single is on, and I'm hoping to release another single this year, so that'll be fun. Cool. Um, let's see, sorry. Um, That's okay. Heck yeah. Um, what's like an artist or an album that you think everyone should listen to? Like, it's just really important that they listen to it. Oh my goodness. Um, I would say the Hemulic Voluntary Band by Ritual. And Ritual is an underground Swedish progressive rock band that has a following, but it's very hard to find. Like you can't, they've got like two videos up on YouTube of them playing live. And they're just this hidden gem of progressive rock. And I just feel like it's so important to listen to their music. Okay. Um, and I love Animals as Leaders too, and uh, Covet, and um, Pain of Salvation too is a really, really good one. That's one of uh, the bands that I'm in Sunset Mission biggest influences pain of salvation they have this one live album that every note is perfect and you're just like oh that's cool well i feel like uh that's like a really like um kind of like a farm to table like uh band it's like um definitely not like um mainstream at all you know that's yeah. some, like organic rock and roll or something or whatever with uh progressive music it's usually pretty hard to find um unless you usually it's like your weird friend that is just like hey check out this album that's in like 16 different time signatures and like check out the 16 minute long prog epic and we we made one of those during <laughs> the pandemic it's called eternal flight and we had a bunch of guest singers and harpists and there's flugelhorn on it too and just flugelhorn. a lot of different instrumentation and cool that was the pandemic baby that's pretty that sounds awesome and this uh on the hemulic voluntary band by ritual they have the grandfather of Prog Epics, which is a 26 minute long epic, actually about the Moomin Trolls cartoons. So this little Swedish cartoon of little troll fairy creatures, and they write about this book called The Dangerous Journey, where all of these characters go on this insanely epic journey together through the wilds, and they run into monsters and all sorts of things, and they really take that story and bring this whole other um, audio medium to it that's just like fantastic storytelling. Wow, it sounds like theater or something. Yeah, yeah. Prague can be very theatrical 
Um, it's very intense. The nice. scene. <laughs> that's cool. It's like a, it's like taking like it's like one step further than like an ambiance or something. Like I feel like Nirvana, you just like shove into each other and like beat each other up and they would smash their instruments or something. Yeah, it's interesting how music is just for it. it it's so subjective, and I mean, different genres impact us so differently depending on who we are and where we came from. Like, yeah. it's fascinating. Totally. Um, yeah, it feels like uh, music, um, or I don't know, I feel like as a medium, it's kind of like reading a book or something. Like, you can like, two people can read the same book, but it affects another person like way differently, or. Like um, learning a language too, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Or I was thinking like the book analogy, there's like, you know, like in a book, there's like a lot of like human themes and like things like, that like it can like draw out of you or ideas that can kind of put in your head. Same with like music, you know, like listening to a song, like having that, you know, kind of like experience. Oh yeah, but uh, what were you saying about uh, what was it? Not books or uh, music. What was the thing you were mentioning? The album. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, the Hanuk Voluntary Band by Ritual, or I forget which train of thought we were. Oh man after <laughs> <laughs> shoot um maybe i should just ask you a, n a new question yeah sure that? It's just <laughs> control i'll delete that whole thing <laughs> um have you had any uh interesting you know times at shows or gigs like good stories or uh, anecdotes you've you've gotten oh yes acquired <laughs> well i actually met my now partner at that 10 forward show that you all were at Really? And, and the progressive math rock single that I released in April was a coming out story of me being polyamorous. And then we just found each other. You meet so many people at shows. It's, it's just interesting. You never know what's going to happen. And so many stories blossom out of, but that's the most recent that I can think of. Cool. <laughs> Got any like highlights from, that, from, the, uh, from the day? Or it was just kind of like you met, you guys ran into each other and kind of hit it off? Yeah, I mean, it. I'm really funny because socially, if, if something makes me nervous, I can just shut down and, and I can be really, com especially when I'm alone, but like, I mean, I can be really independent and really bright and happy and then as soon as I see anyone that I'm interested in or even like, um, even if I'm intimidated and musicians can be intimidating, <laughs> I just kind of like For shy sure. away and go to the other corner of the room <laughs> and that's pretty much what happened. And then I, I met him later, and I uh, introduced myself, and we talked more and more, and we just kept running into each other at open mics, and I mean, kept being like a thing where it's like, I like your outfit. No, I like oh, I like your outfit too. Oh, and that's I was cool. just like, oh. No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you're. It's not uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. You're actually like getting to know each other and stuff. Uh. Um. Well, uh, do you have a do you have a process for writing songs? Like, do you have like a maybe like a standard process, or is it kind of like different every time or something? Well, it all starts with listening to the weirdest music that I can possibly listen to. Interesting. Um, something that I'm not familiar with, or just discovering something that's new and excites me, and then I'm just like, oh, okay, I wonder how the, how they got this sound, or I wonder this percussive thing, like a lot of the like one-handed tapping stuff you've probably seen me do is yeah. like kind of like these groups of fives, like dicka 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 like that. Um, that mm. came from Toast and the Bossy and Animals as Leaders, basically, because I was just like, how, how is he doing anything? I'll just start with like one thing and I'll just learn one thing and then sprinkle it throughout yeah, yeah. like the folk songs and, um, and then I'll think of some odd tunings, Joni Mitchell style or, I got really into Madison Cunningham in college as well, and that was what, she plays in C standard, so I started playing in C standard and then got the baritone and ended up going even lower to like drop A and stuff like that. That's pretty so. cool. You know, um, I, I noticed uh, when you were playing earlier, like, um, even though the tuning, I didn't recognize it, I still kind of got the sense that you were like developing this like ambiance that I kind of could like connect with, you know? And that's cool, I feel like, um, because um, I don't know, it's sort of like, uh, uh, let's see, 
like if you have like a car or something, like understanding how like different parts work or something, it just kind of gives you a new like appreciation for it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's the baritone guitar is so wonderful, so universal, but also a different instrument in that lower register. It's so lovely, and I mean, I'm glad I picked it up. Nice. <laughs> or else, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't have been here today. <laughs> oh wow. Well, yeah. It, uh it all led. To, it, it was all leading up to this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for having me. Oh yeah, no problem. Thanks for coming. It, it was it was fun.